أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم حسبنا الله ونعم الوكيل نعم المولى ونعم النصير ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Hadirin Mahfil, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Iman and in Islam and humanity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our second episode in the series called Quran Immersion. Alhamdulillah, last week, Alhamdulillah, with the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the barakah of this great glorious month of Shah Ramadan Alhamdulillah we were able to just initiate and just jolt some questions and do some sort of reflections towards the Ummul Kitab which is known as Surah Al-Hamd which is known as Surah Al-Fatiha and I'm sure you must have made your own notes and um, enjoyed the first part of our four-part series, inshallah. So before, you know, having any more questions with reference to today's program, I think it's extremely important that we try and begin with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We begin with his name, who is Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. All the peace and blessings be upon our final messenger, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa wasallam, and his pristine, pure progeny. So, inshallah, today being our 14th day of Shahr Ramadan, for most of us, inshallah, I think time, uh, the time is moving very, very fast, and it's it's almost like we are missing the month of Ramadan already because of the um, you know the quick days and the passing by of these amazing glorious days and nights of this great month of Shahru Ramadan which you find that there is so much of barakah there is so much of light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and alhamdulillah we are just enjoying the fast we are enjoying the present moments alhamdulillah so for today's um, topic, we want to do some of the reflections from the surah, the chapter of the opening, which is known as Fatihatul Kitab. But before even delving into Surah Al Hamd, inshallah, I will take the lutf of reciting the surah in front of you, and inshallah, you will have your own mushaf next to you so that you are able to inshallah enjoy every love every word every kalima allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is inviting us and guiding us inshallah and he himself is introducing surah al-fatiha but before that i think it's extremely important my dear sisters and my viewers that we ask certain questions that are deep they are very deep and i think these questions really uh, remove us from our comfort zones they really stretch our you know our souls and our intellect and it, it makes us really think about the whole essence of uh, shahru ramadan and the revelation of the holy quran for humanity for mankind and hence i think it's extremely uh, phenomenal to understand one question and that is something that I always question myself before I even share this question with you all with all due respect and humility let us ask questions like what is the state of my heart right now I think it's sometimes we are wondering we are so distracted we go through so many moments of different sort of um, thoughts in our minds and we've we've lost as a community in the 21st century we are losing focus we are really losing focus and i think it's extremely um, important that we we ask this question what is the state of my mind right now how do i feel right now when i open the quran what are the feelings that i go through 
what are the feelings that I go through? So people um, like who feel very, you know, sad, they feel very hopeless, they feel extremely um, uh, challenged with the trials in the COVID pandemic right now in the situation that we are all living in, uh, not being able to go to mosque, not being able to see communities, not being able to uh, meet with people. Um, you know, we, we feel very overwhelmed, uh, breaking our fast at home, breaking our fast with family. And hence, um, it's it's very crucial and it's very serious that we feel the present moment and just grab the present moments. It's extremely uh, important that we grab these opportunities that we receive from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as tawfiq. And hence this tawfiq is when, when Allah says, وَمَا تَوْفِيقَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ Meaning that the tawfiq comes except from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hence we go to the second question, which is, what is my intention? Is my heart, is my soul uh, doing tawajjah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is my heart facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I mean, these are the reflections that we need to do, right? It's not just finishing the surah. It's not finishing the Holy Quran. Um, we need to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the whole essence of reciting, of reading, of reflecting and, and seeing that self uh, introspection, self-transformation, you see that there is a movement that is happening when I read the verses of the Holy Quran. And the Quran is also known as the Kitab al -Dhikr. It is known as a Dhikra. It is a remembrance. And that is why we, we use the word Quran. And when we look at the word Quran, Quran comes from the three letters. Qara Hamza. Qara'a. What does it mean? It means to to read, to excessively read something. And hence the book, the Mus'haf of Quran is known as Al-Quran. So I'm just trying to simplify these things so that we are all together in this beautiful journey, reaching the proximity and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hence my intention, my niya is crucial that it is seeking the light of Allah, seeking pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, connecting and aligning with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us Surah Al-Fatiha as Ummul Kitab. And when we talk about this whole phenomenon of Umm, what does Umm mean? When we look at ourselves as mothers, in Arabic, we are known as Umm. The word Umm means mother. And Surah Al-Fatiha is Ummul Kitab. It is Ummul Kitab, meaning that it is the foundation. It is the mother of all the chapters of the Holy Quran. And you know that we have 114 chapters. We have 114 chapters and we have about 77,437 words, okay? Don't get overwhelmed, don't fear, don't panic with the, the words that we have because most of them are repeated. They are often repeated. Words like Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, you know, all these words that are constantly appearing in the Holy Quran, they are oft repeated, right? So don't get overwhelmed with 77,437. Oh my God, how am I going to hack it? No, a lot of it is frequently repeated. And you also see that we have 6,236 verses in the Holy Quran. And hence, I mean, we just need to just focus and soak in the inshallah the noor we need to in encapsulate and just feel this presence with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i think most of us who have our worries so i just want to say that as a side point uh, which is also very very crucial by the way my dear brothers and sisters that 
you know, we have worries, we have our challenges of our children, uh, family, fasting, preparing iftar, pre preparing suhoor, uh, doing our jobs, um, our full-time work, and we have clients, we are meeting, we're going through meetings on Zoom, uh, we have online uh, meetings that we need to attend. But I think at this point, I think it's very crucial that we uh, disengage from all these thoughts and just focus on the Holy Quran, inshallah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the Quran with you. And let us journey together and inshallah just encapsulate a few reflections from Surah Al-Fatiha. As I mentioned last year, last week, that Surah Al-Fatiha is part of our salah. Without Surah Al-Fatiha, our salah is invalid. So you know that the first and the second units, the rak rak'ah that we normally recite every single day, we must recite. This is a wajib surah that needs to be recited during our prayers, right? So I'm going to recite this beautiful surah, inshallah. And if you have your mushaf next to you, um, please open it. I hope you are all in wudu, inshallah, because when we open the Holy Quran, uh, it's it's highly, highly recommended that we are in the state of wudu. Wudu has its own nurani uh, enlightened implications, and it, it, it brings that high vibrations. It, it already uh, puts us on that divine mode. It puts us in that heavenly uh, mystical mode of, of being in the state of body purity and then the soul purity the mind purity and inshallah seeking that tawfiq from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so before we begin even any surah reciting any surah of the holy quran my dear sisters and brothers we must recite we must recite A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem What does it mean? It means that we are in essence um, trying to keep away, distant ourselves from the accursed Satan. We are literally uh, seeking protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I seek refuge with Allah from the distant, from the accursed Satan, right? So, why do we say that he is distant? He is Shaitan Rajim. Shatana. What does Shatana mean? Some entity, an entity that is distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar Rajim, meaning who has been outcast who has been made outcast from the the mercy from the rahma of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is exactly what iblis did right so we when we go back to timeline we will understand what happened between the conversation of uh, iblis with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i don't want to go there i just want to make this as a point that a practical point that every time that you open the quran you want to be pro protected you want to be in the amnesty of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is rabbul alameen right from the accursed satan and then let us try and recite the surah inshallah surah it means a chapter but we also need to understand what does surah mean in essence linguistically surah means something that is elevated so when you want to see for example a road uh, and there's a mountain you know that you can see you know when you're driving past and you see this beautiful mountain so you find that the mountain is an elevated position it is greater in height it is it is ascending the mountain is erected it is it is higher than the road itself and that is exactly what surah means it means that it is beautifully uh, it it means a chapter it is elevated it it takes our attention it it gives us that attention of learning more what is interwoven what is encapsulated in that particular chapter and hence you need 
to seek that attention you need to find more about the verses that are interwoven that are inside that are encapsulated and enveloped in that particular chapter right so let us inshallah seek the blessings from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and recite Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanir Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين الحمد لله رب العالمين what a profound supplication this is a dua so when you look in the beginning allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself the ba of bismillah the ism is the name denoting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. He, in essence, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the way he wants to introduce himself, correct? Right? So when you look at this particular surah of the Holy Quran, you find that Bismillah rahman rahim is part of Surah Al-Fatiha, like all the other chapters in the Holy Quran. The Bismillah is part of every chapter of the Holy Quran. And we also mentioned that Al-Fatiha is an opening. What is it opening to? It is basically opening towards the nur of allah it is seeking the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is seeking uh, light from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right so when we look into the different tafsir when we look at when we talked about allah tabatabai's tafsir uh, last week and i just briefly mentioned because i didn't want to get into the technical aspects of the um the you know the the arabic the linguists the linguistic part of the um, words in the Holy Quran, um, you know, the the kalima, the huruf, I didn't want to get deeper into those aspects because um, this requires a lot of time. And hence we have this theme just as humble reflections that we can all do together. So when we look at uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and I mentioned it last last week that ism ism uh, is also sumu it it means something that is elevated like allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is exalted who is high who is mine mighty he needs to be exalted he needs to be glorified he needs to be praised and hence ism also sumu which means very very highly eminent it, it it requires it demands respect and hence it is ism right so bismillahir rahmanir rahim and we talked about rahman we talked about rahman which in essence doesn't um, have any um, meaning if you look at the english translation we we loosely translate it as you know the all beneficent the all merciful the benevolent you know all these uh, translations that we make but raham rahima the ra the ha the ma in essence it it means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala voluntarily voluntarily he is encapsulating his love and through his love he is showing his mercy he is showing his mercy he shows his mercy inclusively he is a rahman inclusively to the entire entire creations the creations that i don't know you know it 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 encapsulates everything everything that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created now 
You know, when we look at this whole concept of Rahma, when we look at the concept of Rahma, yes, I will give you an example, a very simple example that I learned from one of the lectures that I was listening to uh, a great scholar, um, revered scholar, Sheikh Shamali. And when he was uh, discussing the Surah Al-Fatiha from Al-Mizan, Tafsir Al-Quran, and he gave a very simple example um, and, and trying to depict the Rahmah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And here in one of the lectures, um, he mentions that it is almost like, you know, when uh, uh, you find that, um, you know, a child is bored. So, for example, if a child is bored and you just want to spend some time with that child, right? And you, you don't give the child toys or a book or a pencil or a toy or a doll or anything. What you do is because you see this child alone, uh, you find that the child is perhaps very lonely and bored. You go as a mom, dad, a, you know, an auntie, uncle, granddad. You just go there, sit with the child and make the child smile. Make the child smile or play with the child. Make the child happy. This is a small version, a concept that denotes to the grand Rahma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something so minute. This is just an example, a very simple example that you and I can inshallah benefit from. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created everything out of his Rahma. And this is inclusive. I mentioned last week in my first episode uh, of this discussions that Subhanallah, whether a person is a kafir, a person is a hypocrite, a person who denies the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite him denying the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah gives him life, Allah gives him uh, children, Allah gives the, the family everything that they, they need. Yes, so this is an all inclusive attribute it is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's trait this is how he wants to be known this is how he wants to introduce himself and you find that this is how you look into the quran and allah begins with bismillahir rahmanir rahim there was a person there was a person in the time of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and basically um he saw that Rasulullah, our beautiful final messenger, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exalt his, his maqam, his ranks, may Allah enlighten his lights, subhanAllah. Um, this person, this Arab person, he sees the Prophet and the Prophet was holding and kissing and cuddling his grandchild, right? So according to the hadith, it mentions that he was holding his grandchild and he was kissing and showing benevolence, rahma, you know, that, that kindness, that love and that, that nadar, that beautiful, um, beautiful gesture, right? And here the person says, you kiss children? Oh my God, this is something serious that the Prophet Sallallahu heard. And this Arab person who was a father of many, many children, and he says that I have so many children, but you know, I've never kissed. I have never shown this gesture of kissing my child, my children. Hissing or showing that rahma to my children is, 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 is known to be a sign of weakness. As soon as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad wa ajil farajum. When he heard that, he was extremely angered. He was perturbed. He almost felt like leaving the the presence of this person and he left and and in fact he he really scolded the the arab father who had no mercy who had never shown this this love and the affection the mahabba towards his children now this in itself teaches us that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to show 
and and manifest and kindly be expressing our rahma towards our family members towards our wives towards our husbands towards our senior members towards our grandparents towards animals towards the environment you must have this quality of rahma but when you look at ar rahim bismillah ar rahman ar rahim when you look at ar rahim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has explicitly shown and displaying his ar-rahim quality his attributes of ar-rahim to those who have strived those who have done the jihad those who have struggled in 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 emulating and and being part of the journey of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance and being part of the journey of accepting islam as a holistic way of living in totality you know it is ar rahim is for the mu'minin for the anbiya for the awliya for those who are god centric those who are godly who are god conscious who have attained or are attaining a uh, taqwa from moment to moment and for them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reserved this reward this gesture of his infinite mercy his excessive mercy not just in this dunya but also inshallah in the hereafter but when you look at ar rahman ar rahman the quality the attribute of ar rahman is specifically for everybody for everybody for the entire you know creations allah subhanahu wa taala displays his rahman the sifa of ar rahman okay and then when we look at the verse alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin subhanallah the l in the beginning what does it mean according to allama tabatabai and if you look at scholars of mufassirin those who are you know exegetes who have done you know a lot of studying in in quran and hadith and trying to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's message when you look at alhamdu alhamdu right so the al in the beginning according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's understanding and i'm just trying to paraphrase i'm just trying to simplify it for you for our brothers and sisters who don't have the time to you know read you know to read so al means um it means the but in essence it means all all it 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 encompasses everything so alhamdu alhamdu right what is a big deal allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have said al madh or al shukr lillah al madh lillah but here in in this particular verse allah says alhamdu lillah rabbil alamin subhanallah it means all praises belong to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lillah lillah all the praises all the praises right so for example if if somebody does a good act right a noble deeds you see a lot of people supporting uh, the orphans supporting good projects building mosques masajids um you know alhamdulillah we have done so much uh, great deeds in this world who have left a legacy you know timeless legacies so when you look at you know people uh you look at scientists you look at great scientists who have made great achievements in in findings and and bringing this you know the science out and sharing it with the with the world right so should i be praising them in essence what is my niya how where do i stand now this is just an example i'm giving you so that we understand that as far as people are concerned we appreciate their gestures we appreciate their accomplishments their accolades we we talk about them 
uh, alhamdulillah we can even praise them but in reality in essence in the bunya the foundation of alhamdu meaning that everything that you and i and everybody in this world who has attained excellences who have attained great heights in knowledge you know like the marajas the great scholars we we look at the scientists we look at philosophers we look at people who have constructed hospitals buildings bridges made bridges for us made life so much more easier for you and i whatever we comfort that you and i enjoy today we need to go back and remember remind do a zikr that alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin meaning that every praises belong to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so for example allah subhanahu wa also mentions that when you're talking about the verse Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. He says that when you look at a pearl luster, so for example, if I look at a beautiful pearl, if I look at a flower, you know, he says that you do madah, you, you praise it, but it's it's not excessive. It's, it's something that is limited to the flower. So you praise the flower, but it is not voluntarily become a flower. There was a higher purpose there was a creator there was a malik there was our allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created this amazing beauty that you and i see allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has displayed everything and just like what imam khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi mentions in his tafsir and in his understanding um, whereby he also says that whatever i am sharing the knowledge that i'm sharing it could be possible whatever he wrote in the commentary of surah al-fatiha he says in his utmost and this is why you find that these great pious scholars like imam al-khumayni rahmatullahi alayhi allama tabatabai i mean you need to really go through their lives you know these great godly alam rabbani these amazing scholars who spent all their lives you know in jihad who would not even buy anything you know extra every time they got a shahriya meaning whenever they were provided with their monthly uh, gift a hadiya when they were studying in hausa they would collect that money and buy books you know the authentic original you know the heritage the treasures that you know we shi'as have and this is how they used to travel they used to travel from one town to another town from one village to another village just to make sure that whatever they were putting in writing using their alam using their humble pencil or a pen and putting these manuscripts together you know spending years of juhud and struggle and striving going through pangs of hunger going through faqa faqa meaning not being able to even eat for days just so that you and i can enjoy the knowledge the books you know the heritage the libraries that you and i see today subhanallah everything that you see today is because of these people of taqwa the people who spent their lives in pleasing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence you find that allah matabatabai also says that when you look at the flower or the luster of a, you know a pearl or a diamond you do madah madah is also a, a form of praise and that is why allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for the quran because it is his final word it is his final word and hence you see that you begin with alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen all praises belong all all the praises meaning that everything that is good everything that you see is khair everything is beauty from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen so 
Allah did not use a shukru. Shukr is when we are dealing with humanity, so we thank them, we are grateful. But when you look at the word alhamd is encapsulating a shukr, it is also encapsulating the uh, madah and it becomes in totality, in essence, it is Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. When you look at the word Rabb, 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 what does it mean? It means one who has the mulkiyat, who has the kingdom of nurturing, who has the audacity of gradually, with compassion, with, with the nurturing of a higher hand which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how he nurtures us right because he is Rabbil Alameen he is Rabbil Alameen right so when you look at the word Rabb and it is stated according to the same Al Mizan, whereby he also mentions that women and mothers are known as Rabbatul Bayt. Rabbatul Bayt, what does it mean? It means they are the nurturers of the household. Yes, so they know how to look after the family, they know how to place the furniture, they know how to, you know, take care of everything that is in the house, right? from the kitchen to the children to feeding to looking after the needs of every individual in the house they are constantly mothers are constantly nurturers right and they have this beautiful sifat of the rabbul alameen he is a rabbul alameen the sifat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our nurturer so when we say he is the lord of the world right to be honest my dear brothers and sisters lord is is really it doesn't befit it doesn't really show the manifestation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rububiyya because he is in constantly in a movement of nurturing everything not just human beings nurturing plants you see how when one puts a, a seed inside the ground right and then you tilt the ground and you cover the seed subhanallah and then you see that you start watering the seed and how that beautiful seed uh, slowly slowly germinates and becomes into a fine beautiful flower a gorgeous flower a gorgeous rose right now this required the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his nurturing so when I have done my part I have done my part by putting the seed into the ground ensuring that there is uh, the sunlight and I've done my best in ensuring that the the amount of water that I need to put in to the uh, seedling so that it blossoms into a fine beautiful tree uh, an erected a beautiful tree or a plant similar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nurtures every detail in this world subhanallah and hence we are told that when you look at every sign and that is what I was trying to say earlier that Imam Khomeini rahmatullahi alayhi he says that everything in this world the things that I see with my physical eyes inshallah the things that I can see with my heart with basira is nothing but painting you know the ayat of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the lessons of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence an ayah in the holy quran in essence it means it means a sign it is a signpost it means it is a miracle from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because these are the words that can never be altered and hence it is a miracle and hence the quran is fresh the quran is so fresh that you and i need to look at the verses of the holy quran and bring and come up with fresh understanding fresh Tadabur, meaning that I need to reflect, I need to contemplate, I need to ponder. And these ayats are nothing but miraculous signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring these signs for you and I? 
from pre-existence to this existence to post-existence in eternity if you look at this whole concept it is for you and i to be able to align with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's fitra with the nature of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence you find in one of the hadith it says takhalluq bi akhlaqillah what does it mean my dear brothers and sisters create yourself you know you need to have a disposition the khalluq you know become godlike bi akhlaqillah bi akhlaqillah takhalluq bi akhlaqillah what does it mean it it means that i need to become allah like not not that i'm going to be like god you know that's not the case that's not what i'm trying to say my dear brothers and sisters what we need to understand is when we are looking into his attributes his sifat all the amazing as attributes that we read in duas when you read duai mujir when you read duai sabah when you read dua joshin al kabir when you reciting quran what do we see we see that we want to become like allah's traits we want to manifest in our hearts so in my disposition and that is spirituality that is the real spirituality that my spiritual ethics my akhlaq are embodied with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the essence of my wujud my presence in this world that i reach my full potential what is my full potential it is inshallah to embody insane kamil and who is this insane kamil he is none other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's great messenger who was known as wama arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alamin so go back to the word rahma what is it it is that love that the rasul sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam exhibited his best of dispositions you know if you look at 40 years before the revelation before he receiving any formal formal revelation the inzal of quran the nuzul of quran you know in the span of 23 years how was the holy prophet's behavior it was the best of akhlaq the disposition that he embodied encapsulating the manifestations and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hence it's extremely important that we look at the ayats as signposts as learning these are practical lessons that you and I really need to learn so inshallah with these 40 minutes that we have spent together the idea is that i want you to write down three just three practical points of reciting quran every single day and putting them down in your shahru ramadan journal i'm sure you all have you know got a book and journaling every verse of the holy quran with a practical point and i think that is the whole essence of going through the juhud the struggles of fasting abstaining ourselves from all the things that are halal food and drink the halal food and drink is all halal right but the idea behind this fasting is la allakum tattaqun we need to renew our intentions we need to refresh our intentions we need to reform ourselves we need to transform our akhlaq we need to better ourselves and that is the big deal of shahru ramadan that is the big deal whereby we need to understand when we say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin alamin meaning the worlds the alamin worlds not just the universe alam is singular alamin is the many many worlds meaning the world of the animals the world of the planets the world of the jinns the world of the angels the world of the plants the 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 seas the human beings the people of intellect 
So this also has a debate in itself, according to Allah Matabat Bai. He talks about al alamin you know, in so many different understandings. And I think it's important that you have the copy, the volume one of Tafsirul Mizan, so that you will understand what it means to to know al alamin Alam Alam is is a sign, it's a flag, right? Alamin. What does it mean? It means the different dimensions of creations that are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we just need to understand how we can encapsulate Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So for example, if I recite Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen and the way you recite Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, in essence, it will all go back to how my heart aligns in the state of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, how I understand with my very insignificant knowledge, with the little, not even a tiny dot of knowledge that I have. But this is how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could understand when he recited Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You can understand that his understanding and his ma'rifah, his you know, perception of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen was a different understanding. Why? Because these are the mukhlasin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purified them, has purified them and hence their understanding, their understanding of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen is very, very special, very different. It's, it's, it's an entire, uh, you can talk volumes about their understanding of Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. But for person like myself, I just understand the way my heart feels and how the purification of my heart is and in alignment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what I want you to inshallah reflect on in today's dars, in this halaqa, in this Quran journey, Quran immersion, immersing ourselves with the divine light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hence you find that Quran talks about وَنُنَزِّلُوا مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَالرَّحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed this Quran as a shifa, as a healing, it's the healing of my mind, intellect. It heals my intellect. The Quran heals my intellect. It brings me back to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And hence this redefines and rewires my intellect, right? And it is shifa to my body. So when I recite Quran, reciting Surah Al-Ham, it is a shifa. It is a healing for my physical body. It is a nourishment for my physical body. It is a nourishment and a healing for my mental state, my emotional state, my spiritual state, my soul state, my akhlaqi state, my ethical state. And hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is none other than the Kalamullah. The Quran is the Kalamullah from the author and in Surah Al-Ham, Allah introduces Himself in how we need to speak to Him. So the first part of Surah Al-Ham is the way Allah wants us to introduce Him, to understand Him, to gain His ma'rifah, to gain His proximity. And then you will find how we need to supplicate to him and make this part of dua when we say and then moving on from there but the first three verses of the surah al-fatiha are basically introdu introducing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the first four verses are you know allah introducing himself to us and then later on we find ourselves making this beautiful gesture emptying ourselves from ourselves so that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can illuminate our hearts with his nur and knowledge 
inshallah may Allah accept our humble efforts wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa ahli bayti tayyibin al-tahirin wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh